Hey, so here we are. It's January 2nd, 2020, and we are up and running. Welcome back. This is Deborah Peters, and this is the Deborah Peters Show, and I thank you so much for being a part of this program and helping me build my channel, because as you help me build my channel, then I can reach more people and help more people. So please subscribe, comment, hit the thumbs up, and definitely share this with your tribe if you find this useful. I would love to know what you would like me to cover. I'm open to covering anything from health, wellness, mindset, business growth, revenue growth, team development, team performance, and relationship concepts. So just put a comment below and let me know. Today's episode is all about sales. I am sure that if you are in business for yourself or you're working for a company, you've already taken some time to put together your numbers for 2020. I don't know anyone that's not asking for more money this coming year. And I thought, how appropriate to do a show on sales. I haven't done a show on sales before, and there's just so much I can share with you from the neuroscience perspective to the actual execution, to defining how to up-level your numbers throughout the year and break that down into quarters and months and weeks and days, right? The small steps add up to the big giant leaps. So in today's episode on sales, what I'd like to cover is how to actually take your numbers to the next level without all the dips and the valleys and the highs and the lows to your sales numbers. Because that in and of itself is actually a program that runs in your mind that once you get a handle on, you'll find that not only do your sales level out and stay more consistent, but you're actually able to up level them see them level out again, up level them, see them level out, and consistently take that above and beyond anything that you've ever done before. How would you like that? To be able to say, I have my sales numbers wired for the year, and I, you feel totally confident in being able to manifest that and actually see that show up on your metrics, right? So first of all, there are drivers behind all behavior. And I wanna start at this point because this is the part that you can get into control of and you can see a marked difference in your numbers. Drivers mean that there, there's a, a psychology or a, a, a set of values within us that drive us to behavior or not as the case may be, and understanding those drivers is really the key to breaking through to the next level in any area of your life. Now, some people call those drivers pain and pleasure. Some people call those drivers away from and towards. Regardless how you label them, we have two basic drivers that drive our behavior. Because our values are really what get us out of bed in the morning, not our goals. And I'll do a whole segment on goals. I've already started that and I'm gonna to continue to unpack it. But for this one, let's talk about sales and how those drivers can impact you in a positive way or impact you in a negative way. So from a positive perspective, when you have that end goal in, not just in sight, but deep down inside of you, you connect to that end goal, then those sales will find a way because you'll find a way. You'll keep digging, you'll keep moving through, you'll keep talking, you'll keep asking, you'll keep connecting, you'll keep showing up every single day and those numbers are what seemingly looks like magic in terms of coming together, are really coming together because you've overridden an old program about what you're capable of because we do have a set point to money each and every one of us so let's get into the whole pain pleasure thing first of all you want to identify what your sales volume looks like does your sales volume go up 
drop down a lot, go up, drop down a lot, go up, drop down a lot? Or does your sales volume go up a little, drop down a lot, go up a little, drop down a lot? You see where I'm going with this? You want to measure the metrics on your sales volume on a annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and even a daily basis. Now, depending on what industry you're in and depending on the size of the sale, because every sale has a different sales cycle, meaning how long it takes to come back around as a signed deal and money in the bank and the jingle in your jeans, right? So let's just, for all intents and purposes, let's just call the playing field level and say that whatever your sales cycle is, you have a cycle to who you are being as that business development person, as that relationship person, as that, because we're not really talking about online sales here, we're really talking about relational sales. And so we can talk about online sales in another, in another video, but right now we're really talking about relational sales where you've established or are establishing a relationship with the client, whether it's B2C or B2B, regardless, a relationship dynamic needs to take place. Now there's a lot of things that go into play on that that I'm not going to go through in one single video, obviously. Um, and you can always sign up for my Mind Mastery Revenue Accelerator online masterclass that starts on January the 30th. And I can teach you these tools in an in-depth way so that you actually go through a repatterning process and then you have a higher level of performance from within because it's not from without, all right? And here's why it's not from without. So if you're looking to be motivated you're always going to find yourself looking for something outside of you to lift you up. And I would like you to start considering that you would rather be inspired because that inspiration is infinite and it comes from the inside out. So if there's no one around you to motivate you, there's no pain motivating you, there's no pleasure motivating you, you're inspired. You basically are like this engine, this like endless superstar engine. Okay. So when it comes to the whole sales thing and depending what your peaks and your valleys look like, I would say that if you have a significant number of peaks and valleys over the course of the year, that rather than say it's about the market, unless you're selling Christmas trees, right? And you only sell them once a year, then it, this, the idea that it's seasonal really doesn't apply to you because you can restructure, repurpose and reinvent any product or service other than Christmas trees or menorah candles for, you know, for the, for the year, right? And you can do this from a place of always being relevant because that's what marketing and branding is all about always being relevant now when you have these cycles of ups and downs then usually what's happening is it's an away from driver it's a pain driver so you're making the sales because you have to not because you have a, a pleasure connection to the sales process and this is what causes most sales teams to be up and down like a yo-yo rather than have a leveling and an increase, a, you know, an inflection point where they're constantly raising the bar. You have to get over the addiction because it is a patterns or addiction. You have to get over the addiction to the pain because as long as the pain is running you, what ends up happening is this. You're in pain because you don't have enough sales. So you start moving, you start executing because you're in pain. Pain drivers only last so long because as soon as the sales start coming through the door and you're seeing the money, the pain goes away and now you've lost your entire motivation. And see, this is why motivation doesn't really work. You want to get into a place of inspiration. So what's inspiring? 
what's inspiring. You have to look at what's inspiring to you. And usually what's inspiring to an individual is some sort of pleasure. Pain is typically an emotional negative place. Pleasure is typically a measurable, tangible outcome. So clean up all your away froms, clean up all your pain drivers, and you'll be in tip top shape. How do you do that? You have to learn to program your own mindset. You have to learn to understand what makes you tick and get over the old anchors from past experiences that caused you to act from a place of pain and actually get into a place of, of pleasure dynamic where you have tangible, measurable goals that are you know, either money goals or physical goals that you're moving toward because that is, is your reward. All right, so you can make a connection. You create an emotional connection to the reward. So pain, pleasure, guaranteed. If you're up and down like a yo-yo, or if you're not able to hold your volume and you find yourself starting over all the time, I can promise you it's a pain, pleasure issue. And I've worked that through for a lot of sales teams in a wide variety of industries around the world, and it's, and it's totally doable. The other issue might be sort of like a paralysis where you get in your head, you're overthinking it too much. You know, I can't make the call too early in the morning because they won't be available. I don't want to interrupt their day. I can't make the call too much toward lunch because they might be in a meeting. You know, that's like an endless black hole. That's like a bottomless pit. Just the key to overcoming that is to really get in tune with you. And guys, this is why I'm insisting that you learn to meditate every single day, because then the guidance comes in, the perfect timing shows up, you're being shown or told or, or prompted, you know, to make the call at that time. Um, it could also be the high of the deal. So what I've noticed with a lot of salespeople is they're really hooked on how awesome it feels to close that deal. And so the higher the high, the lower the low. So you can get totally built up and, and high on closing that deal, but then the high wears off, right? So once the high wears off, you have to literally create a, a bottoming out or a deficit or a low sales volume to then turn that around and go for the high again because it's a seeking of the high, right? And some of that is really just being the hero. You know, some people just love to be the hero. So look at the heroic act. I pulled it off. I pulled myself out of that pit again of lack of performance or not hitting my goals or whatever, whatever that is. So that's, that takes some repatterning as well. Set points. I talked a little bit about that earlier on. So we all have set points around money. You know, there's a saying that if you take the income of the five people that you spend the most time with, and you divide that up, you add it up and divide it by five, that will be your annual income. And so, you know, this can be really hard for a lot of people. Like, who are you spending the most amount of time with? Are you spending the majority of your time with high, high performers that are abundant, that have an abundant mindset, that are not afraid of where the next dollar is coming from because they know that they're performers and whatever they set their mind to, they're able to create that. Or are you spending time with people that are penny pinchers and, and basically having to count every little nickel to make sure that, you know, the bill is even at the end of the lunch, you know, some people are like that. So, you want to really look at the people that you spend the most amount of time with because we become like our environment, right? And sometimes it's a fear of rejection. You know, when 
when you don't want to make the call or you don't want to engage in the sales process because you're afraid they're going to reject you, then you never really step out there and go for what you want. And this can be a really big issue for a lot of people. It's just like low self-esteem, low self-worth, afraid of not being accepted. You know, there's a lot of psychology, the psychology of sales. It's a whole big, that's a whole big process right there. Um, and it could also be maybe the, the joy of being the underdog, right? It's like, oh, poor me, I can't seem to get this right. You know, somebody come and save me. I feel like that goes on a lot where they, they need someone to come in and sort of take care of them and nurture them along. Like maybe you didn't get the nurturing that you wanted when you were a kid or something. It's different for everyone and it's valid. You know, these are very valid issues. So if you're in any sort of business development role or you're managing a team and your team has some numbers to hit this year, or you have some numbers, so you're running your own company, you're running your own business, you're, you're the division manager or the CEO, and you've got these numbers to hit, you really want to look at some of the things that I've covered here, and I'd be happy to work with you, and just see the truth of what's blocking <laughs> those numbers from flowing because we live in an abundant universe. There is absolutely no reason for anyone to be in a place of challenge or starvation or lack of uh, abundance. And I know this is a really tricky subject for a lot of people. So let's just stick to the sales part of it and realize that you create your own reality so you can you can raise the bar on yourself and you can get those numbers up and you can go above and beyond anything you've ever done in the past. So that will enable you to raise that set point as well. So I hope this helps you and it's something you can work with. It's a really great start to a new year and I look forward to seeing you again. So thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for the sharing, the liking and definitely comment because I'd love to create um, content that would serve you as well. Have a blessed day, everyone. Ciao.